probably should have labeled these before I moved. Oh! Ooh, I know exactly which one you are. Eight months ago, I was busy making Cubane. We were getting pretty close, but then I got sick and almost died. Now that everything's different, there's just one thing left to do. Get revenge. With the new equipment and a brand new lab, it's time to run it back. This is the Cubane Redemption. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Cubane Redemption series. We're going to be combining the knowledge from previous attempts with our new lab to finally make that sweet, sweet cube. Now before, when I was making Cubane, it hadn't been done on YouTube yet, and now it has, so why are we even doing it? Well, first off, I don't ever give up. I'm here to finish what I started. Second, my personal goals for the Cubane project still haven't been met on YouTube, so that's what we're going to do. Now what exactly are we trying to do here? We're aiming to synthesize Cubane, obviously, but there's a few more things that we're trying to do. Most importantly, we're going to be making Cubane with store-bought materials only. This consists of mostly materials obtained from the hardware store. There will be a few items that we need to get from the Overlord, but I'm counting that as store-bought because it's just the way people buy things nowadays, and it's not like Amazon sells analytical-grade chemicals that we need for our project anyway. Next, we need to make a product that is of reasonable purity. I know we recently saw EX and F synthesize Cubane in the shed, but we're aiming for a product that is a little more usable. All the respect in the world to EX and F, but I'd like to try to do this in less than three years and have a decent product. Essentially what we're trying to do is aim between the Chemiolus synthesis and the EX and F synthesis to obtain a product that is usable but is only made from easily obtainable chemicals. I'd like to continue on after the project and go beyond it, potentially to ONC or something different. And finally, we want to pave our own path. I'd like to perform a synthesis path that hasn't been featured on YouTube yet and is unique. This allows us to be unique and offer a different experience for the viewers. The path will have of course been performed in literature before, but not on YouTube. With all that said, let's get into the actual synthesis with part one. If you enjoy high energy, high speed, or highly interesting chemistry, consider subbing to the channel. One of the biggest things we need to tackle right away is purity. Our stuff from the very beginning needs to be as pure as possible to give us the best chances. We're going to be starting off here by making cyclopentanone. This is going to be done by distilling adipic acid at 300 degrees in the presence of barium hydroxide. I've done this plenty of times before, and the biggest trick with this is to get our temperatures right. Because if it's too hot, the adipic acid will start distilling over and freezing in your condenser, leading to a clog, and then... After the initial distillation, the cyclopentanone is treated with potassium carbonate, which helps dry it and get rid of any residual adipic acid. After that, I performed another distillation, this time with a fractional column to try and keep the quality of the product as high as possible. Everything between 128 to 131 C was collected and then placed over sieves for a week. I did this twice, using 500 grams of adipic acid each time with 20 grams of barium hydroxide, leading to a ton more cyclopentanone than we got last time using just 500 grams. Now it's time to get after the ketal ingredients. I started off by taking my toluene from the hardware store, which is actually decent quality to begin with, and running it through a fractional distillation. After the distillation, I let the product sit over molecular sieves for about a week. The next thing I need to tackle is the ethylene glycol. 
This is obtained by buying concentrate antifreeze at the store. They even had a rebate on it. I don't see Ligma Aldrich offering rebates on any of their stuff. Now what's left is to combine everything together and get cooking. Instead of talking you through this process, I'd like to do something a little different and just show you. And we are back. The mix of ethylene glycol, toluene, and cyclopentanone was refluxed for about 30 hours while water was pulled out using a Dean Stark trap. All that's left to do is the vacuum distillation.
You can cheat this process a little bit by distilling the first bit off without vacuum, up to about 120 degrees. After that, a vacuum is pulled on the system and fractions are taken. I saved some of the lower fractions just in case I wanted to try to run those through again, but what I was really after was my fraction that came over consistent with the literature at about 59 to 62 degrees Celsius under vac. All in all, we received 158 grams of the ketel with decent quality. The liquid should be crystal clear and smell a little minty. I hope you all enjoyed part one of the Cubane Redemption with us ending up with some really nice looking ketel. In the next episode of the series, we're going to be prepping everything for the bromination and going all the way through the Deals Alder step, which is where our path differs from others. Make sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more interesting content. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you guys later.